Mm. I couldn't wait to get to this story. I think this is one of the most powerful uh, God, declarations of African American descendants of slaves. Um, and I think that it is a, a very powerful story. And it is one that, that bears paying attention to on so many levels because Satan's kingdom is coming down. And you have to understand how historical some of these events are. I'm just thankful and, and grateful that I'm on the planet at this time and space that I can bear witness to some of these things that a lot of y'all are maybe taking for granted. Um, now, this story, the headline is actually descendant of two enslaved African Americans can, and you know they will, sue Harvard for emotional distress over the pictures of their relatives at the university court rules as it blasts of the school for outrageous conduct. Okay. Um, and and, and this, this, this is a very historical, again, event. The Massachusetts Supreme Court ruled the Tamara Lanier can sue Harvard for emotional distress for portrait it owns of her enslaved ancestors. Lanier has sued the university in 2019 for ownership of the Daguerrella types it owns of Renty Taylor and his daughter, Dayla. The images, some of the first of enslaved African Americans were commissioned by a Harvard professor to promote white supremacy. Now, although the court said the school retains ownership of the images, it slammed Harvard for handling of Lanier's complaint. The justices condemned Harvard's action given the school's own admission of its relationship to slavery and ownership of stolen property from the slaves. From slaves, I'm sorry. Massachusetts, of course, um, that's what they ruled. And it said that um, the highest court ruled that the descendant of enslaved African Americans whose images were used by Harvard professor to promote racist theories and that they can sue now for emotional distress. Lanier, again, sued the school in uh, 2019, but they still cocky because, of course, no black man has a right that the white man feels that he has to honor. So although the court ruled Harvard retains the ownership of the images, a unanimous 7-0 to zero vote said Lanier could sue for negligent infliction of an emotional distress. These were her damn relatives. And in a joint statement with her lawyers, Ben Crump and uh, Josh Kostoff, Lanier said that she would fight for her family's justice. We are gratified by the Massachusetts Supreme Court historic ruling in uh, Tamir's case, Tamara's case, uh, against Howard University for the horrible exploitation of her black ancestors as this ruling will give Miss Lanier her day in court to advocate for the memory of Renty. It is with great pride that we continue this legal and moral battle for justice against Harvard as we look to repair the damages and the de degradation that they have caused Tamara Lanier, her ancestors, and all other people of color exploited by that, that damn institution, Harvard. Um, it said um, it, this July 17, 2018 copy of the photo shows a dangerous type of Renty Taylor, which was commissioned by a Harvard biologist whose ideas were used to support white supremacy and the enslavement 
of African American. Uh, given the university's horrific historic role in the co-earth creation of the the de de Grady Dagogario types once linear approach Harvard as a descendant of the individuals depicted in these photos, what they called the stereotypes, provided documentation to that effect and requested further information. A duty to respond to her request with due care was triggered. Harvard should have known that its conduct towards the plaintiff would likely result in emotional distress and that it's the conduct of this factual and legal cause that this is the cause of her distress. The Chief Justice Kimberly Budd also condemned the Ivy League school's actions amid the school's own report that it had ties to slavery and items stolen from slavery from enslaved Americans. Y'all gonna have to give it back. Y'all gonna have to give it up. Harvard's refusal to even discuss respectfully with Lanier her request to possess the stereotypes of Renty and Dale and Files in the face of an aspiration report. It brushed her off, publicly dismissed her ancestral claim, and continued to display and profit from the Dago stereotypes without Lanier's input or involvement. So at the center of the case is a series of 1850 Dago stereotypes in early type of photo taken of the two South Carolina slaves. Both were posed shirtless and photographed from several angles. The images are believed to be the earliest known photos of American slaves. They were commissioned by Harvard, Lewis Assazes, whose theories on racial difference were used to support slavery in the U.S. throughout claims that the Africans were biologically inferior. You know, you, you would think that, you know, the only people inferior here is y'all. You, you, you know, because you, your, your mind is just so damn crazy. The lawsuit says Aziz came across the con Congolese, Cong Congolese, and uh, Renty and his daughter Dalit while touring plantations in search of racially pure slaves born in Africa. To Assaziz, Renty and Dalit were nothing more than research specimens. The suit says the violence of compelling them to participate in a degrading exercise designed to prove their own subhuman status would not have occurred to him, yet alone matter to him. So, among other demands, the suit asked Harvard to acknowledge that it bears responsibility for the humiliation of Renty and Delia and that Harvard was complicit in perpetrating and justifying the institution of slavery. A researcher at Harvard Museum rediscovered the photos in storage in 1976. But Lanier's case argued that Aziz never really legally owned the photos because he didn't have his subject's consent and offered them no compensation, and that he didn't have the right to pass them to Harvard. Lanier says she grew up hearing stories about Renty passed down from her mother. While enslaved in Columbia, South Carolina, the Sioux says that Renty taught himself to read and later held a secret Bible reading on the plantation. He is described as small in stature, but tolerant in the minds of those who knew him. The Sioux says that Lanier has verified her genealogical ties to Renty, whom she calls Papa Renty. She says that he is her great, great, great grandfather. And like I told y'all, for a person like me, I'm not that far removed. My great-great-grandmother was a slave. So she was enslaved. And so for some of y'all, it may seem like a long time ago, but it's really not. It's really fucking not. Anyway, my mother made sure that not only her children and her grandchildren, but every knew, everyone knew the stories. 
Lanier told the Associated Press. So asked what she would do if given the photos, Lanier says she wants the opportunity to tell the true story of who Renty was. And that is very important to me. All, all praises due to God. It's a wonderful story. And it is going to have great, great ramifications. I want to know what y'all think about Renty and her family and Lanier, Miss Lanier and how she pursued and persevered to get justice for her family. Leave your comments below and let me think let me know what you think about it. If you like what you hear, please subscribe, share the channel. I'll see you in the next video.